we'll get started by installing gulp and other dependencies that we need to actually do this. So we're on npm install, and this is a long list. Gulp, gulp babel, babel slash core, babel preset env. Let's bring in bootstrap, of course. Now for bootstrap, we'll also need jQuery slim. We'll use gulp concat to actually concatenate our files, and we'll use gulp uglify to minify our files. We'll need gulp sass to, of course, compile any of our sass and make it into browser readable CSS. We'll need a couple other helpers here. We'll need gulp rename to rename our compiled files to minified files. We'll use gulp source maps. That'll help us in our debugging. And to finish this off, we want to make sure that we save these as a dev dependency in our package.json. Okay, now that that's done, we have to create our gulp file. And this is the file that will be looked at when we actually run our gulp command from the CLI. So go to the root of our project. We'll create the new gulp file.js. Let's start by bringing in our dependencies. So we have gulp, babel, and the other utilities that we'll use to concatenate our files and minify them. And just to make things a little more easy to manage, I like to create an object to manage some of my paths that I'll be referencing frequently. So create a node path first, and this will equal our node modules folder. Then we'll also be creating some custom styles and custom JavaScript. So I'll use my styles path to reference that. And we'll put these inside of an assets folder. And JS path. We'll create our first gulp task by calling gulp task, which is a function. The first argument that it takes is a name for the task. So we'll start our JavaScript task. The second is a function that we'll actually execute when we call this task. So we'll return gulp. And first we need to give gulp, gulp the source files that we want to work with. And this can take an array. And the two files that we need to work with right now are jQuery and Bootstrap. Now jQuery has to be brought in first because it's a dependency of Bootstrap. So we'll call our node path and we'll concatenate our path to jQuery, which can be found at jQuery slim dist jQuery.slim.js. And the next uh, file we need, of course, is Bootstrap. also in the dist folder JS and you want to use the bootstrap bundle because the bundle contains another dependency called uh, popper JS and we need that once we have our sources figured out we want to call the pipe function and we'll begin our source maps by calling source maps init we'll pipe again and we'll start to concatenate our files. So we'll concat, and we'll concat this into a file named vendor scripts. Just so we're clear that these are our vendor scripts and not our custom JS that we'll be writing. And once that's done, we need to actually put it somewhere. So we'll pipe the result from that concatenation. We'll call gulp dest for destination. And we'll send that to our public folder. This is where all of our static assets are served, remember. After that, we want to now uglify, so that means we want to minify our scripts. So we'll create two different scripts. We'll create a version where it's non-minified, so we can easily look at it, and then another version that is minified. And if there's an error on this minification, sometimes this is helpful. We'll call a function, which will get the error, and we'll just log that out for now. Now after we've minified everything, we want to actually rename this file. So that's where our rename helper comes into play. Rename is a function that takes an object with some configurations and we'll call the suffix. We'll set the suffix to dot min. So what this will do is it'll take vendor scripts and it'll add a dot min to it before it adds another dot js at the end. And from there we'll pipe the result to that to gulp and we'll send that to the public folder as well. And then we'll finish our source maps. So we'll call source maps again. This time we'll write. And we'll send those to the public folder as well. 
And that does it for our JavaScript task. Now let's try this so we make sure we don't get any errors. And we do that by opening up our terminal and just calling gulp js for the name of the task. Oh, you see paths is not defined. I just made a mistake here. There, let's try that again. So starting our JS task, and once it's finished, there we go. We see that we have vendor scripts, .min, and then the map as well. So there's our minified version, and there's our non-minified version. Now let's create our gulp task to handle the styles. We'll call this our styles task. And just like before, it takes a function. You can return gulp, and we'll start with setting the source for our files. So the first one we'll call our paths node path. And the first styles we'll bring in, of course, is for bootstrap. And then we want to handle any of our custom styles. And these will be found just in our assets directory. So paths, we'll call our styles path, which is pointing to our assets slash CSS, or SCSS rather. And we want to handle any of the files found in the immediate directory or any subdirectories with the ending of SCSS. That's how that will work. And from our source, we'll pipe our source maps first. Call init there. And then we have to call our SAS helper. This will actually take our SCSS and transform it into uh, CSS that we can actually use, or rather that the browser can use. So set the output style to compressed. Then we'll pipe everything to our auto prefixer because we want to make sure that uh, all the styles that are being created in the CSS, all the CSS that's being written, will be uh, usable by all browsers. Uh, and here we'll just set the browsers option to the, the last two versions. And then finally, I want to take all of that and I want to concatenate that to a single file called styles.css. I'll finish off my source maps. And then I'll put all of this into our public folder. Okay, now let's actually run that task to make sure it works. Gulp styles. That's it. So what happened there, we took our bootstrap and any custom files we have, which it didn't find any, so it didn't throw an error or anything. Uh, and then it concatenated all that into a single file called styles.css right here. And it minified it automatically for us because we chose the compressed output style right here. And then we also have our source maps for debugging later on. So now let's jump to our edge files and make sure instead of referencing the CDN versions of our scripts and our CSS that we'll actually reference our own versions. So right here, what we can do is get rid of all of that and we'll call our script function and we'll call vendor scripts dot min dot js. So let's check that one out first to make sure it works. Open up our website, go back to the home page. Oh, start up our server again. Refresh. And our dropdown still works. And this dropdown is dependent on uh, some of the JavaScript from Popper. So that definitely works, and we know we're good there. Now let's go to the head, which is still found in our layout file. And rather than just calling CSS Jumbotron, we'll call it CSS Styles. And then we can get rid of this altogether. Refresh, and it still works. Now we have to set up one final task for our custom JavaScript. This task right here is just for the vendor JavaScript, and I'll actually rename this now, vendor.js. I want to set up another task for custom stuff because we want to write ES6 features and we'll need Babel as part of our build there. So we'll set up a new task and we'll call this custom JavaScript. 
And again, we'll return gulp and we'll start with setting our sources. And this may not be the only one we do, so I like to use uh, an array in each case. And we'll set up our paths, our JavaScript path, and anything within our JavaScript path directory and any subdirectory, anything ending with a JS, that's what we want to look at and we want to deal with. Now it's important to note here that if you're creating multiple JavaScript files for your custom work and one file will be dependent on another, then you don't want to include all of your files uh, like I'm doing right here. Instead, you'll want to add them to the array individually, uh, paying close attention to the order in which you add them to the array. That way, you will have your dependencies lined up properly. So after we set our source, we want to pipe this again to our source map. We want to initialize those. And then we'll start with using Babel to deal with any um, special JavaScript that we write here. So we'll set the preset. We'll set this to Babel preset env. And then once Babel deals with it, we want to concatenate all of our scripts into one common uh, file. So we'll pipe this to the concat function. And we'll call this custom scripts.js. And then when that is finished, we'll send that to our public folder. Now, after that's done, I also want to minify this. So I'll call pipe uglify. And just in case there's an error. I'll just log that out. JS error. Custom JS error. And then once we're done minifying everything, well, I have to put that somewhere as well. So I'll call gulp dest once more. And we'll send this to the public directory. And then we'll finish off our source maps. And copy that. Send that to the public directory as well. So we're done with that. Now let's test it out. Let's go to our, we haven't created an assets directory yet. So we'll create assets. And we need two subdirectories here. JS and SCSS. Let's call an app.js and we'll, we'll use some ES6 stuff here. So const thing two equals, we we'll use an arrow function. So now our app.js file should automatically be added to our scripts file. Now let's go to our gulp file. What did we call this? We called this custom scripts. So I need to go to our common scripts here and I'll add custom scripts here. So let's run gulp custom dash JS and make sure that that worked. So my guess is uh, we don't have the right preset installed. So if we go here. Yeah, you can see we're running beta here and here. So this preset isn't the latest. So I'm going to go here instead. npm install. I should install it this way. env. And we'll save that at dev instead. OK, now that we have that installed, I'm going to get rid of this in our package.json. Clear that. Okay, now that we've done this, we need to update the package that we're using as a preset here. So we'll use the at babel slash preset env. And now that I'm looking at this again, I realize that after we minify this, we're not actually renaming it. So I'm going to just steal this line here from our other scripts task. And we'll add a suffix of dot min. So I like to have both sometimes. So now when I run gulp custom js, that should work just fine. There we go. 
Look in our public folder, we have custom scripts, the unminified version. Okay, you can see how this was changed from a const to a var. And here, instead of our arrow function, we have just a regular function here. And then our minified version right there. So that's exactly what we want. So that's it. You can look in our edge files and just to review, you can see we're bringing in our custom styles here, our custom scripts and our vendor scripts down here. Now, of course, we don't want to run our gulp tasks manually each time we update something. We want this to update automatically as we work. So we do that by setting up a couple of more tasks. So the first task we'll set up, we'll call it a watch task. And we call the gulp watch function. And our first argument we pass is the path to the files that we want to watch. So we'll look at our custom assets that we're setting up only. We won't bother with vendor stuff because of course that won't change as we work. And we want to watch any file within the parent directory, which is assets slash SCSS, as we set it up up here. And we want to watch anything as a, that's in a subdirectory as well. So basically anything that ends in an SCSS. And what will we do? We will run a task and we'll run our styles task as our second the array there is our second argument. So we'll set up another watch, this time on our JS path. And we want to watch any file that ends in a JS. And when that, when any of those change, we want to run our custom JS, uh, our custom JS task. Now the final task we want to add is the default task. And this is the task that will run automatically when you call simply gulp from the command line. And you have to name this default and then gulp will know automatically that this is the one you want to call. So we'll call the watch task here and then we'll run our vendor JS and then styles and then our custom JS. Really the order doesn't matter. So we'll open up our command line and we'll call gulp and you'll see that everything's ran in the order in which we put it into the array here. So watch goes first and then vendor styles and then custom. So here we get the time, how long it took to actually compile these files. So we'll go up to app.js and we'll change this. And as soon as I save this, then custom JS will fire again. Now there's one thing you have to be aware of. If you don't have any files in here to begin with, then they won't be watched and then Gulp won't pick up the changes. So whenever you add a new file, you have to restart Gulp. So here in the SCSS directory, if I add a new file, we'll call it index.scss. Uh, Gulp doesn't know about this file yet. You can see even just adding the file, the styles task didn't fire. So I can do body background gray and I'll save that and nothing happens. So you actually have to restart Gulp to make it see the new file. Now, once you have your index.scss, uh, it makes it a little easier to um, manage this. You can actually add new files if you prefix it with an underscore. So let's call one pages with an underscore. Then this entire page won't actually be compiled. What will happen is you can import it here in the index. So we'll do import uh, oh, at import and we'll import pages. See, it keeps firing every time I change it. And I'll do body, background, uh, gray. And there we go. So now it'll start watching everything that I've restarted it. And that's actually a nice way to keep your SCSS more manageable is by creating little files like this and importing them. In, in like an index file. Okay, that does it for this section of the course. I hope you enjoyed it. I think with what you have so far with working with edge templates and understanding how to set up gulp tasks to uh, manage your assets, I think uh, you can do a lot with this. So I encourage you to experiment a little bit, try different libraries, maybe not bootstrap, maybe you wanna try something else, add them to your gulp tasks and get more familiar with the process there. If you have any questions about anything we did, please post it down below the video. I appreciate all thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any updates. Thanks very much for participating. We'll see you next time.